Hi guys, and welcome to the Economics of Entertainment. In this video, we're gonna be discussing why so many musicians go broke. So we've all seen the lifestyle that high profile musicians tend to lead. Private jets, exclusive parties, fancy cars, an obsession with the Bahamas, sexy partners, and seemingly very little care in the world. While this holds true for many, the reality is that the image of success is often a mask under which a disparate reality exists. A reality filled with stress, anxiety, a feeling of having to keep up with the Joneses, and worst of all, not knowing when the next big lump sum of money is going to arrive. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna be focusing on the world of rap music because why not? I joke, because it's one of the easiest to observe and ironically, it has the starkest contrast between what we observe as fans and the reality for many rappers. So as the title suggests, we'll be discussing why so many rappers go broke, starting with the good stuff first. Many rappers sign shitty deals relative to artists that create other forms of music, namely rock and or pop. It isn't uncommon to find rappers locked in deals that many would deem predatory. Take for example, Big Sean's admission on Drink Champs, Noodle Wayne's deal with Cash Money, or Meek Mills's deal with Maybach Music. Knowing all of this, why on earth do artists sign bad deals? Mainly because they don't know how to calculate their true value outside of the offers received from multiple, or in some cases, one label. However, this is unsurprising. Think about it for a second. When you get your first job offer, you have no real data on what you're actually worth. Yes, you can check Glassdoor for average salaries, but there are so many variables at play. For example, your rank, your level of education, the university you studied at, and the location in which you reside, just to name a few. Now back to rappers, because of the showmanship involved and the pressure to act like everything is gravy baby, conversations about what people sign are often had after the fact is too late, or when somebody realizes they signed a shitty deal, a crappy deal. The bad deals usually feature a number of similar characteristics, low royalty rates, crappy advances, a very long rights period, meaning that the label will own your work until a specified reversion date, subject to recoupment of an advance. If you don't know what recoupment or advance means, please watch my video on why the music business is not necessarily a scam here. And lastly, if the deal was agreed by the same legal counsel who counsels the label, as in the label recommended their firm to represent you, I'd be very worried if that were the case, very. Unfortunately, rappers are far too often enticed by luxury goods and expensive homes without being offered true equity in their careers. Secondly, the enticing nature of the life gives birth to an insatiable appetite for luxury. I will elaborate. If you are given a penthouse in Miami, a G-Wagon, a yellow gold day date 40, and an advance of a million dollars, you are likely to begin to adopt the perceived behaviors of somebody who owns all of these things, specifically a rapper who owns all of these things. It isn't uncommon for rappers to develop similar spending habits to athletes, as mentioned in our Why Do Footballers Go Broke video. These things include multiple expensive car leases, excessive five-star holidays, regular bottle buying in high-end nightclubs, expensive jewelry, flying in temporary company, daily eating out at lavish restaurants, buying only designer slash name brand clothing, short-term house rentals, funding the lifestyle of leeches, and bad financial advice. Now, this is not the case for all, but it's a common expenditure pattern that I've observed watching rappers. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna be focusing on a few items mentioned previously, namely expensive jewelry, funding the lifestyle of leeches and bad financial advice. But before we do, if you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to continue seeing content like this. Rappers love bling, as do I to be honest, but I'm more of a plain Jane kind of guy. With rappers, however, it's somewhat excessive Take for example the GQ jewellery collection to see the extent to which these guys think being iced out is absolutely necessary. Just wow. This makes me wonder however, what would happen in a world where rappers wore replica jewellery? Hear me out. If people think that rappers are rich and you know they're rich, surely they don't need to prove they're rich because they're actually rich. I personally don't agree with fake watches, however, I can see this argument holding up. The argument that you bought the fake because you don't actually like the watch, you only bought it because you think you're supposed to have one because you're a rapper. I think the former American football player Chad Ochocinco would agree with this way of thinking. Frivolous spending doesn't limit itself to jewellery, but also multiple expensive car leases. I know what some of you are thinking. If you've got it, why not flaunt it? The problem is when you don't actually got it. Let me land. At least on a G-Wagon, which seems to be everybody's favourite motor at present, doesn't come cheaply, especially if you have two or three. And then calculate the price you pay for one by the miles actually driven. If you're a touring artist who seldom spends time at home, one has to ask, why do you need multiple vehicles of this calibre sitting in your garage? I'm not trying to sound like the fun police, but restraint should be exercised when spending heavily whilst you're in your 
Prime. Maybe two vehicles is enough. I get it. Floss is part of the image, but it could also be the reason why some rappers never truly attain financial freedom. Every rapper's circumstance is different, but the fact remains, most are not Jay-Z, Rick Ross, Drake, or part of the upper echelons of the rap financial class. The saddest part about the success of a rapper is the lack of financial guidance one receives when making it to the big time. It isn't uncommon for rappers to be taken advantage of by hangers-on, leeches, or fake friends. In addition to that, we often see rappers given questionable financial advice from predatory advisors seeking to achieve fees ahead of the long-term financial goals of a rapper. You often see cases of rappers becoming the sole earner in their entire family being relied on to do things even for distant relatives. This one's very hard to swallow. Unfortunately, being in the spotlight positions rappers in such a way that leeches will come out of the woodwork to call in favours because they feel like the rapper owes them something. Even Fat Joe mentioned it here. One time I sat all 50 of them together. We was at the Ritz Carlton in Puerto Rico. We flew there on two private planes. I'm the only one with money. So I'm sitting there one day, I can't sleep. And I'm looking up at the ceiling. I said, you know what? Call everybody. So I, I, all 50 of the guys come. And I say, yo, listen, man, shit ain't the same. I ain't got it. What do you mean, God? What do you mean? No, I ain't got it. Like, I, I don't want to lie to y'all. And I had it. Right. But I was checking See, them. Right, exactly, yeah. Yep, I yep. was checking them. Yeah. I said, I ain't got it no more. You know, uh, but you my brothers, but I ain't got it. Out of the 50 guys that was dead, only six of them said, yo, if you dead broke, I'd be with you, man, no matter what, every day. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, Those are the six guys that's still with me now. In many cases, artists are managed by people they feel are best for them with very little tangible data to go off. I mean, it's hard to look into the future, but come on guys, be better at picking managers. The choice of manager is typically someone in the rapper's social circle. This makes things complex and oftentimes leads to tough decisions occurring when it's far too late. Now this very surface level diligence that rappers do makes an artist the perfect person to take advantage of. There have been cases of managers encouraging artists to sign deals or endorsements that mean they themselves would get more money, not the artist. The financial advice given to rappers by some professionals can be worrying. Rappers are often shown short-term, get-rich-quick schemes that seldom work. Rappers similar to athletes are by some considered unsophisticated investors. However, because of the amount of cash they earn and the speed with which they earn it, they've become targets for random investment ideas. Be careful of those that guarantee a return and promise to match your earnings from music into perpetuity. These investment ideas usually come in the shape of property development vehicles and or investment in high-risk business ventures after being told it's totally risk-free or safe. To avoid such traps, please have a look at some of the resources down below in the description, but follow your gut. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Thankfully, not all people in the industry are predatory, and there are individuals who genuinely want to manage an artist well. So if you're an up-and-coming artist and you're looking for a manager, below I've linked some resources. Unfortunately, there's not a one-size-fits-all solution for everyone. Some get it right the first time, and some need to be burned before making that U-turn. As always, it would be interesting to get your feedback, some funny rapper stories that you know of down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. Thank you again for watching. Peace.